came back from Holland on the very last day of autumn. Made it through the customs, took the bus to town. Flat looked cold and empty, the chairs unused and dusty. You all letters and papers lying around. The Dutch people were friendly, you know they put me up and they fed me all along a tour of one night stands. All my days and all my ways are so confused to tell you right now. I'm gonna make you back to Amsterdam. You can feel fine at a time you choose to lose yourself for a while. Bottle of wine in some back street cafe. Out on the street, there is a chance for you to meet anybody you please. I'm taking the time to ease your blues away. Hey, 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 hey. Fred was a crazy driver. Took us at a hundred miles an hour Down a side street Out of a traffic jam All my days And all my ways Are bound to lose I tell you right now I'm gonna make you back to Amsterdam You can feel fine at a time You choose to lose yourself for a while bottle of wine in some back street cafe out on the street there is a chance for you to meet anybody you please taking the time to ease your blues away just came back from Harlem and the very thing I was wanting was to find some way to let you know how I felt you can't say much in an evening if you know you'll soon be leaving not much time to talk and it's maybe as well But I wanted to give you something Cause I know you really helped me I've written you a song with a small West Indian band Though it seems someday that all my ways are bound to lose I tell you right now I'm gonna make you back to Amsterdam 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 Ba 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 I got asked in the pub to do a song for a couple of people. Um, they were called Steve and someone else, and I can't remember. I remember one of the names, that's good. Now this is a song all about um, my auntie. Uh, she lives in, Gl well, no, no, actually, she lives in a place called um, Kilcott, which is a little village uh, just outside Gloucester. And she is um, a Jehovah's Witness. I'm not really sure why, and I'm not even sure what it is, um, except that I know that they have a, a running battle feud with Seventh day Adventists, and I also don't even know what they are either, so um, I'm pretty vague on religions. But one day we went to a flower show in Gloucester Cathedral together. Uh, largely because there was sod all to do, really, in Gloucester on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> and it all came down to a choice between the flower show and the sound of music, which had been running for 14 years at the local cinema, you know. And uh, I couldn't quite take that, so I went to the flower show. And ostensibly, it was put on for old age pensioners by the Worthies of Gloucester. Now, the Worthies of Gloucester are kind of like West Country Tweedies. Uh, you've got all sorts of ethnic groups, really, now that you can tell by the dress, the sort of rockers and... Um, smoothies and uh, whatever, you know, and, and tweedies are the ones that stand out really more than anything else. They all wear sort of tweed suits and have um, ginger moustaches, men and women, all of them, you know. <laughs> um, they all ride horses and they all play golf and they all um, take tea at four o'clock and they all do good works. The, the main thing, the main way to spot a tweedy is because it does good works, you know. Um, and by and large, these good works sort of re rebound on whoever they're aimed at, you know, with a ferocity sort of previously unknown to man. In, th in, in this case, 
They were raising money for old age pensioners in Gloucester Cathedral. It was all a jolly good show. It was all rather fun, you see. And um, they set this thing up whereby they had a sort of neat contract. They advertised it all, uh, all over the Gloucester as being free. Um, and when you arrived at the door, um, you know, sort of like the largest Tweedy they could lay their hands on, so <laughs> monstrous great Tweedy was standing in the door with a sort of armfuls of programs. And uh, would you like a program? Well, not particularly. Well, you can't come in then, you know, like you're going to... <laughs> Oh, all right, I'll have a program, you know. And it was, uh, all the program, it was free to come in. You had to have a program to get in. And the programs cost two and sixpence. That's sold uh, decimalized, undecimalized currency. And so the people bought their programs and they went in. And the whole of Gloucester Cathedral was desecrated. The flowers everywhere, you know. It's like lupins, it's sort of straight out of Monty Python. Or something. Yeah, it's flowers, you know. the sort of statues of saints with flowers behind their ears. And the whole <laughs> crazy. And they had made money in so many ways. They set up a Coca-Cola machine on, on the um, coffin of, I think it was, um, well, there are all sorts of coffins, like John the Fornicator, 1401 to 1402, you know, <laughs> had a short life, you know. Um, and, um, you know, instead of revering John the Fornicator, they erected a, a you know, sort of, Coca-Cola machine on his tomb, and they were doling this out at sort of ten pence a, ten pence a throw. Now, the, the, the trick came when um, you realized that the whole cathedral was swarming with old age pensioners. There was no one else in the place apart from me and my aunt. And um, so how it worked out was that they'd rip two and sixpence off all these old, pension, old age pensioners, and they were get, then going to deduct their expenses from the whole procedure and give the rest back to the old age pensioners. Uh, <laughs> Which is quite fantastic. This is called raising money for charity, the tr Tweedy style, you know, that's great. And um, the final insult was that we, you know, we wandered around and there were just sort of signs of carnage everywhere. They were selling, um, you know, sort of cheap LPs, They homemade LPs of the sort of 16 greatest hits of Isaac Watts and things like that, you know. And everything was for sale. I mean, the whole cathedral was turned into a supermarket, you know, it's ludicrous. And we tried to get out and they got another Tweedy in disguised as a choir boy. Um, sort of in full choir boy's drag, you know, like from head to foot, um, right down to lipstick and a halo. And this, this choir boy was standing in the exit, you know, sort of blocking the whole exit with a sort of silver tray, kind of laden with silver. It was obviously a silver collection. I should think probably the old age pensioners put pennies in and he whipped them out again, you know, like so it was all silver. And you were embarrassed to put a penny in. And um, you couldn't, I mean, there was no way of getting past this choir boy to get out into the street unless you put some money in, and then he'd sort of like smile at you and step aside. So after I'd knead him in the groin, you know. So, <laughs> um, we got out into the street, and we, we had um, two sort of diverse ways of looking at it. My aunt sort of turned around and solemnly put a curse on the whole cathedral. And um, I wrote this particular song. This is called Gethsemane Again. Yeah, it all has to do with that. On Saturday night I came to your flower show Blown like a kite Stood by the tombstones And gazed at the lights On the altar And the horse-faced old ladies And tweedy-tongued men Of county society They came and they went With pamphlets and leaflets Of Christian events For the poor It all just like Jesus crying in the rain. Ain't it all just Gethsemane again? Oh, the half a crown programs on sale at the door were clutched in the teeth of the rich and the poor. As they swayed in an undertone, conscience free forward together. And the outstretching hands of the swains of the Lord sold the communing commuters the word with LPs of Moses and photos of God in the hall. Ain't it all just like Jesus? Crying in the rain Ain't it all 
Just like Nazareth. 